Westworld's back. <laughs> so, um, given that the last uh, to, during season two, when I tried doing episode by episode reviews, they weren't uh, particularly well viewed um, by my channel, but I still want to talk about it. Yeah, these will probably go up in the break room. I can't guarantee I'll do them for every episode as it airs, but I'm going to try. Um, so, background. I liked what I liked season one of Westworld quite a bit. I found it intriguing. I thought the concepts were neat. I thought the presentation was very well done. Uh, some of the characters I loved, um, and I, I was I was hooked. I was intrigued. I was like, yeah. Then season two happened. <laughs> I loved it. I love season two so much. I love the way the characters evolved. Dolores went from a character I had almost no interest in and from that pivot point at the very end of the first season to where she was and what she, and what she turned out to be in season two. Loved it. Loved Teddy's arc. Loved Maeve. Maeve, well, Maeve was great from the beginning, but she was really fantastic in season two, which is why Liz and I actually, between the two of us, tend to actually call the show Maeve World. Um, the, but the, God, episode eight of season two, um, with the character of Aki. Oh man, what an amazing hour of television. So it was really weird for me to find out after the fact that se season two of Westworld was like really divisive. I'm still not sure why. About the only thing that didn't quite work for me is they didn't make as good use of Ed Harris, uh, the man in black, because... He, he just as a character, he lacked purpose. He was there because he was still around at the end of the previous season and was awesome in season one. Um, but they didn't have as much for him to do that time. But that's really about the only complaint I have about season two. I thought season two was phenomenal. So going to season three, this is an odd beast of a thing. It's very strange because right now it is so disconnected from the story we had been following. Because honestly, so much of Westworld up to that point pivoted around the setting of the park, both the interior of it itself, in terms of where the characters were all going and interacting with each other, and the offices for behind the scenes. That was, that was the show. We've got glimpses of other places, but that was it. So to have something that is completely detached from that Make, gives it an odd feel. Now, I am aware that part of that was not necessarily possibly originally intended in the plans for the season because most of the set burned down. <laughs> so they actually couldn't use it. They couldn't go back and film uh, on that set. They'd have to rebuild it from scratch. And they were, and they had really kind of set up that it was going to be mostly off the park anyway. But something tells me that original plans probably would have had more flashbacks or more stuff in the park as well that we're just not going to get now. But the result is, is that, and especially like how much of a leap forward it is. I don't know what the actual time frame for how much time has passed, but it feels like we're picking up on characters who are in very different places from where we left them. And in some cases, like, shouldn't you be dead? <laughs> um, or at least not in that body. So it, it's opening with, uh, with this sense that we're playing catch up, like across the board. And it almost in a way feels like I'm watching a completely different show with characters that I know from Westworld. It's almost like characters like Dolores and Bernard um, were taken out of Westworld as a show and put in a completely different show. That might sound like a complaint, but at least as far as an opening episode goes, I am intrigued by that. It's a very strange vibe, but I'm kind of interested to see how it's going to play out. I will be curious to see if this sort of, if I settle into it enough where it gains the familiarity that you kind of like to have out of a third season of a show. But at least as an opening, I'm okay with it not being there. Uh, as far as new characters go, Aaron Paul, obviously, I'm kind of interested in, in what he seems to be doing. I haven't really seen him in anything outside of Breaking Bad. I haven't heard 
particularly good stuff <laughs> about his work outside of Breaking Bad. Uh, but he's he's bringing a good haunted vibe to this. And I'm also really enjoying sort of the the glimpses of the technology, the technological extrapolations that are going on in the world overall, because there's a lot of very logical leaps based off A, the technology we currently have, and B, the technology that would have had to existed foundationally or branching off from the technology used to make the park. So that's that's sort of the funny thing, thinking back on it now. Westworld, up to this point, yes, it was advancing technology going on, but it was very selectively deployed because it was being used to maintain a park that looked and behaved like something very old-fashioned out of time. So there's all swaths of technical advance, technological advancements that must exist in this world, but we don't know because they wouldn't be deployed in the park. Things like holographic projection, things like having basically an AI recreation of your friend that you subscribe to over the phone for moral support. Like, that makes a lot of sense, both, again, as a combination of stuff we have now, sort of leaping forward, and the sorts of things we've seen deployed at the park, and what sort, what's sort of the marrying of those technologies and that sort of thing going on. And I also really like that there's been, they've re-emphasized uh, all the stuff that, you know, a big part of the park was observing the guests. Because increasingly as time goes on, we have a much better sense of the data mining that goes on with so many things that we think exist for our entertainment, but, exact, but actually exist to learn about us. So, like, I, I'm loving the direction of all this, and I am still trying to, like, settle in to the world, because, like, it is way more sci-fi, um, just by its nature. Whereas Westworld, up to this point, had the presentation of Western with an undercurrent of sci-fi. We are now much more sci-fi front and center. So, you know, that, ta it takes some getting used to. Um, oh, another actor who's in this that I always love when he turns up, Tommy Flanagan, uh, who plays the bodyguard. Oh, I love that guy. He's always good. Like, I don't, I, he's always in supporting roles, um, but whenever he shows up, it just makes me smile. Like, oh, I love that guy. He's, he's just, he's just cool. He's just badass. He's just got that, that vibe. Uh, dig him. So, yeah, and Maeve, apparently in some sort of, World War II occupied region world thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, that's the other thing. Like, if, <laughs> if I was the theorizing type, which I'm not, but if I was, I could have a field day with this thing in terms of trying to speculate exactly how Dolores has her own body again. If Dolores is in her own body, who the heck is in, I forget the character's name, but Tessa Thompson's character. Where is Bernard? How did he get there? What is going on with like him appearing to be having conversations with himself? What is that about? Who else is in there in control? And who is who and what is what? Go, huh? Very cool, but like, what? And again, I, I'm just the kind of viewer who's going to sit back and go, all right, these are interesting questions. Let's see the answers you got. As opposed to sit back and try and go, ooh, it's a puzzle. Let me figure it out. Because that's just not where my interests lie and how my brain works. But at the same time, I really do enjoy things that do a good job of delivering answers to puzzles. So we'll see if this can deliver. It's setting up a lot more um, <laughs> questions than I recall the show doing, um, at least at, at the opening of seasons. Usually it was questions that evolved over the course of it. Now it's like right up front. I'm here for it, though. I'm digging it. Uh, we'll see if if the vibe of this, if the shift in feel and tone um, and aesthetic maintains for me. Because that is a concern. I do worry that I'm going to start missing the aesthetic of the park. 
But we'll see. I think it's going to be down to the story and the characters to hook me in hard enough where I don't miss it. We'll see if that happens. So Westworld, Season 3, Episode 1. What did you think? Whatever your thoughts are, go on and drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Usual stuff like subscribe, uh, Patreon, etc., etc., etc. Also, uh, stick after this for a little bit. There's a little bonus thing if you kept all the way through to the end. What was it? Well, you will find out in just a minute. But uh, for right now, you can always just come back next time. You need a break. Yep. Um, uh, uh, can you come and tuck me in because my blanket's all over the floor? What did you do that your blanket ended up all over the floor? I don't know. It always just falls off no matter what I do. Every night. At Mama's house, too. Even though I have multiple ones over there. It's because you thrash in your sleep, kid. I know... Yes, I know, because you've smacked me in the face in your sleep before. I'll be right back. Yeah, you have. All right.